Good morning, Mr. Chairman. 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 Now, Lochan Island is a small village in County Down, and on the 18th of June 1994, just like practically every small village uh, in the country, people piled into pubs uh, to watch that match. But at 10 past 10 on that night, two UVF men, wielding Kalashnikovs in boiler suits, went into that pub, fired 25 shots, and killed six people and wounded five others. Barney Green, 87 years old, Daniel McCrenner, 59 years old, Malcolm Jenkinson, 52 years old, Eamon Byrne, 39 years old, Patrick O'Hare, 35 years old, and Adrian Rogan, 34 year years old, were all murdered because they simply frequented a pub that was normally frequented by Catholics and that they were watching a match uh, where the Republic of, of Ireland were playing in, in an international tournament. Now, some people might feel that this is in the past, Tisha, but the pain and the hurt and the suffering for those families still go on today, and nobody has been held to account for those murders. Uh, victims and truth seem to be the collateral damage of the British uh, dirty war in Ireland. Niall Murphy, a solicitor for the victims, have said that the victims are being let down to this very day because nobody is being held to account for the massacre. He said that Barney Green was the oldest victim of the conflict in the North, but the PSNI and the NOI forced the dying Bridget Green to fight to her last days through the courts for justice for her dead husband. A police ombudsman report in 2016, uh, Dr. <coughs> Michael Maguire stated, I have no hesitation in saying collusion was a significant feature of the Lock and Island murders. That report found that the RUC knew the names of the suspects of the killings within one day of the massacre, but they delayed in arresting them. The police ombudsman's report also stated that one of the suspects was being run by the RUC as an informant. Now, some may feel, uh, Taoiseach, that this is, is in the past, but even this weekend, 1,500 people marched in a UVF march in East Belfast uh, in uh, black trousers, white shirts and white ties uh, in East Belfast. These murders are a long, a part of a long list of murders that have happened in the north of Ireland of innocent people. And these murders were carried out, I believe, uh, either by the help of the British state, or at least were covered up by the British state. Um, and we know that the British Legacy Act, uh, which was passed, was designed to give amnesty to people who carried out murders, to stop families getting to the truth of what happened uh, to their loved ones. Now, thankfully, your government has brought the British government to the European Court of uh, Human Rights in, in terms of uh, that horrendous particular bill. I would ask, ask you here today, what progress has been made in the Irish government's case against the British government uh, in relation to this? Gormagas. Thank you, Deputy. Well, I want to thank uh, Deputy Tobin for, for raising this uh, important issue, and I join with him in completely condemning um, what happened there, and indeed, I think very much uh, agreeing with him on the point that just because there's a passage of time uh, doesn't mean that issues can be ignored and doesn't mean that an approach can be taken to any issue that isn't victim-centred and isn't centred in terms of justice, truth and accountability. Um, and I think all parties in this House, uh, and certainly all parties uh, in Northern Ireland, which is a rare enough event, um, have rightly come together to condemn and oppose uh, the Legacy Act that has been introduced uh, by the British government. Um, because we don't believe um, it is compliant with agreements that have been reached between the political parties uh, and the governments uh, of, of Ireland uh, and the UK, uh, because we don't believe it is victim-centred, um, because it is opposed by every victim's rights group um, in Northern Ireland, um, and as I say, it's been opposed by all of the political parties. I think it represents a significant deviation uh, from the approach that has been taken. Uh, through a whole range of agreements um, over many years. It was, with a, it was with regret that the Irish government took the decision that we needed to take an interstate case uh, against the United Kingdom. Um, we didn't do that lightly, um, and we didn't do it without exhausting uh, all of the avenues that were available, uh, diplomatic, political, raising this at British-Irish councils and all of the other places that you'd expect government and government representatives to raise it. But the British government mind was, was set, uh, and the papers have been lodged. My understanding, and I just don't have my note to hand on it, but my understanding is now that the court is in the first instance considering the case um, and its admissibility, um, and then we'll obviously decide on that and how best to proceed. 
I am conscious there is a British general election on. I'm conscious of not cutting across that, but I'm also aware that there is different views uh, in relation to political parties uh, in the United Kingdom and Britain um, on this matter as well. But for our part as a government, and I uh, appreciate on this basis all parties uh, here in this stall, we will continue to uh, speak out and speak up for victims, um, for survivors, uh, for the need for justice, for truth, for reconciliation, um, and for any approach to legacy uh, to be one that has this support um, of political parties in Northern Ireland uh, that is compliant with human rights uh, law um, and also has the confidence uh, of victims, representative groups uh, and others. And we will take every opportunity, Deputy Tobin, uh, to continue to make that case. Um, I intend to meet with the British Prime Minister after the result uh, of the UK uh, election. I hope to be in a position to do that uh, in July. Uh, and this is one of the many issues that I wish to discuss. <laughs> Teacher, I think you're correct in saying that the rule of law is a key part of a, any country being a, a liberal democracy and part of the international community. But there are still key questions in relation to the rule of law in the north of Ireland. So June is also the anniversary uh, of the death of Noah Donoghue, for example. Three years ago, Noah Donoghue, a 14-year-old boy, was found dead in a storm drain in Belfast. The PSNI called off the search for Noah Donoghue within 24 hours of the boy going missing. Um, CCTV footage taken 14 hours before Noah went missing, was actually withheld from the family for two years, um, inex inexplicably. Um, and we have a situation where we're not sure even when the coroner's office received that CCTV uh, uh, footage. The Northern Secretary issued a public interest immunity certificate, which allows for whole chunks of the information around that case to be redacted. And the, Dun the Dunhue family have made three complaints to the PSNI um, ombudsman in relation to that in investigation. Now, I would say as a co-guarantor of the Good Friday Agreement and as a, a supporter of the rule of law, I think the Irish government have a role to play in making sure that the family of Noah Donoghue have justice, that at least the Thank process you, of justice is delivered properly and by the Thank rule you. of law, and that uh, there are major questions of whether or not the British government are delivering uh, uh, justice and truth and fairness in their investigations you, into the death of Noah Dunhu. And I'd ask you to make representations to the British government to make sure that that's actually happening. Please, please. Look, uh, thanks, Ken Cordon, and thanks to, to Deputy Tobin for raising the issue uh, of Noah Dunhu. My thoughts are with uh, the family. Uh, I'm reluctant to, to talk too much about uh, any one individual case, and I am conscious of the processes, the independence of of the PSNI uh, from political interference, as you'd expect, just like on Garda Síochána here uh, in this jurisdiction. But of course, I'm always uh, happy to and eager to uh, hear from families and hear from people who have uh, concerns in relation to uh, any matter in relation to how uh, a state institution or in our role as co-guarantor of the Good Friday Agreement uh, in relation to how they've been treated. But I don't want to cut across any specific, uh, any specific process. But other than to say this, that we as a government will continue um, to speak up for human rights, um, for a victim-centred approach um, to legacy, absolutely for the support uh, of the rule of law. Um, and we take very seriously our role uh, as co-guarantor of the Good Friday Agreement. And I really look forward to having a conversation uh, with the British government uh, in July about how we can both uh, work together in that constructive partnership approach that is so important to peace on this island and on these islands.